Well, well, well. Uh, greetings, <laughs> Giles. I'm great. How are you keeping? I'm surviving. How are you surviving? <laughs> well, the sun is shining, so, you know, what else could I ask for? Well, that's quite something in Glasgow as well. <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> How are you keeping? In this strange world of seeing you online, I mean, in a normal year, I'd probably have done a couple of events with you by now, wouldn't I? Well, of this course, year. of course. Yeah, I think the last time you came up, we had the um, amazing Aldo Kane with us. The, the amazing um, Aldo. Who's, yeah, uh, he's, he's just had a baby, I believe, last he week. He has. Yeah. And he's off filming um, this amazing undersea film. So he was away for his birth of his kid. That's dedication, isn't it? So, <laughs> well, I saw I him back, actually. I saw you must have got the phone call. To, you, you got to, the, the ultimatum to make it back, but no, we had a very enjoyable afternoon. Of course, we've had many a, a fantastic event with you over the years. Ben, Polar Explorer, uh, the, the amazing uh, Charlie Borman back in the well, day. Charlie, he's, yeah. he's a character, isn't he? Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, he's a lovely guy, Charlie. Had some great fun, but um, great to see you today. And uh, Braymont zooming along, nine to the dozen. Jaguar, Hawking Partnerships in-house engineering, a massive new manufacturing facility shaped like a wing. How have you managed to keep up this breathless momentum given well, the challenges it, of the last year? Oh, God, it's not been the easiest year, I tell you what. But in a way, it's given us this opportunity to um, step back for what has been a mammoth year for us because we've been planning this new building, this new site for... It's about four or five years now. Um, we got planning and then development. COVID pushed us back by at least six months in moving in, but it's given us time to sort of get it right. And uh, um, yeah, I, I wish you could be here. I mean, in any normal day, we'd be launching it with all our, our lovely retailers and journalists here, but we're, we're doing this virtual launch and it's lovely to be able to have a chat with you um, to show you, but it's, it's 35,000 square feet where you can come in and live the brand. You can go from um, uh, you know, machining metal, seeing bars of steel going in to watchmakers, um, moving assembly to um, you know, looking at our store and seeing the watches, history of Bremer as well. So it's a, we just wanted a, a place for watch lovers to come and, and, and you're all welcome and all your customers all Bremer owners yeah, you've got to come down and see us. I think everyone needs. Actually, I, do you want me to show? I can show you a slide of the the the, the uh, just what it looks like at the moment. So this is we're, this is us having a bit of fun. So uh, standing on the roof, but it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's this lovely wing building, and you're, you're, we've just been um, yeah the way we're playing around with it. Um, uh, or just fl flipped onto the next slide, which also shows there's a lot of stuff we've been working on, which. Um, We've just announced a partnership with um, Williams Racing. So yeah, I think there are probably, you know, a, a, only a handful of the sort of McLaren, Williams, um, uh, Ferrari, which are the sort of the backstay of Formula One. And, and Williams are literally just based up the road from us in, in Oxford. We're Oxfordshire, we're heading on Thames. And uh, it's just a really lovely relationship. We uh, are starting with them where there's a bit of a technical sharing going on. You know, we are you know, in our manufacturing setup here. We're you know, we're operating machines that some of the most complicated CNC machines you can buy. And and if we can and and a lot of our our guys have come from ex Formula One, ex medical instruments, um, uh, aerospace. So if we can ever do a share of information between and and um, it's lovely to be able to work with Williams on that and. Uh, they're all wearing the Alt 1Z blue um, world timer. Um, and we have some branding with them as well. So that's a, that'll be a fun um, relationship for us to, to have with them. So yeah, we, so we've now got the car. It's sitting in our, uh, in our foyer at the moment, but uh, in, the, in their new color scheme. So it's quite I, fun. I'm absolutely certain that's going to be a, a, the perfect relationship. I mean, I was watching, um, Murray Walker's obituary on, on BBC One. And uh, it was, you know, just the rich history of Williams, you know, seeing Frank Williams being interviewed there. And uh, I'm a, a massive F1 fan myself. I'm, I'm you know, I, you? I, wish, I wish you, you know, the best of luck with that partnership. I, I'm sure it will be uh, 
a very fruitful one, both as, both both as technically, as you say, as also as a marketing opportunity, I guess. Yeah, no, it's, it's you know it's exciting and it's you know it's it's lovely <laughs> to see your name on the side of a Form One car as well. And uh, I live very close to Silverstone, so it's it's all very close to home. But uh, and, and you know as it's always difficult because we're we're a hardcore engineering company. We're manufacturing ridiculously complicated um, components, but you also have to be uh, a marketing brand. You have to be a retailer. You have to do it globally, um, wholesale. The whole elements. It's a really complex business, and and so you're constantly juggling. Am I going to buy a new machine to manufacture more components, or am I going to you know do some branding and marketing? And it's a uh, um, you know, I, however you like it, people won't buy your watch if they've never heard about your brand. So, um, and, and we've I, often talked about this, haven't we? That you know, we both started our businesses in two thousand and two. Yeah. Um, um, you and your brother, my, Grant, and my business partner, you know, dynamic du duos. Um, you know, and and you don't have a backstory, you don't have a so you don't have a heritage like you know a rich watchmaking heritage, and you've created this brand that you know feels like it does actually have that heritage it's been you know one of the cleverest marketing stories i think in you know watchmaking and the fact that you've now brought british manufacturing to this facility from the beginning right the way through to the end i mean i've been to manufacturers in switzerland you see it to a penny over there but to to, to see that now in the uk in henley upon thames is you know a, a mess, massive testament i guess to the achievements that you and Nick have, have, have made, you know, and, and are you now where you want to be, you know, you know, or, or completely unexpected? Yeah, I said, well, first, that's really sweet and lovely kind words. And we, we had this mission statement 20 odd years ago was to do our bit for bringing British watchmaking back to the UK. And, you know, everyone thinks Swiss when it comes to watches and, what was it 60% of modern mechanical watch developed in the UK? You know, Rolex founded in Clark and Well. Um, you know, world sets its time by Greenwich Mean Time. We've got this amazing history. And to be able to um, do our bit, um, and, and we're doing it selfishly, you know, it means we can get better components, we can control all of that. Um, but it has taken a lot of investment. And uh, we this is sort of We've, we've come a long way, but we, we've got a long way to go. And that's exciting, it's a journey. And, and as with your business and what you guys have achieved and you've changed the way retail has been seen. And, um, but it's, it's this long, long journey, you can always do better. And I think that the moment you sit back and go, yeah, I've made it, is the way it all goes horribly wrong. And, and there, there, there's always more news on the horizon. So yeah, as I say, watch this space from, from that perspective. And oh, it's lovely to be yeah. here now. Yeah, and certainly you always, always expect the unexpected with Braemont, I guess, you know, it's, uh, there's always something around the corner. And, you know, this commitment to British watchmaking, you know, should British watchmaking reassert itself to the extent of Swiss watchmaking in the 21st century? I mean, how do you think it could distinguish itself? And, you know, would Braemont be the poster boy? Would we be the poster boy? Uh, definitely not with my face, that's for sure. But uh, <laughs> uh, I, I look, I, I think um, the, the Swiss have been, you know, they took over the industry from the British all those, you know, through two world wars, we lost it. Um, and they will always be the dominant force. And when we started, there were 750 Swiss watch companies. And we were the only company with made in England on you could go and buy around the world. Um, and I, and I, but I think, you know, we've got some brilliant craftsmen. Um, we've got every potential to grow that, but you have to do things differently. I think the, the scale of investment is so massive to, to get, to get to this point. It, it just takes so much money. You can be a craftsman where you're building two watches, a handful of watches a year. And that's almost like prototyping manufacturing, but to manufacture on scale is, is, is a really challenging thing. Um, but I think where um, we've had this sort of, um, always had this strategy of if we can manufacture more in the UK, even if it's you are leather watch wallets all get made in Manchester. Um, uh, we're trying to find suppliers for all treatments on our cases, um, you know, whether it's crystals or whatever. 
So we need the supply chain to grow greater. Then I don't have to keep going back to Switzerland for that resource. Um, so it's just going to take a while. But um, you know, our, our role is telling the story as we go around the world. Um, we don't want it just to be a British story. It has to resonate in China, to America, to everywhere else. And um, But I think there, there is an appetite for something a bit different. And if you think the number of watches even with all this investment, it's, oh, the number of watches we make is tiny compared to the big boys. Um, and the big boys are all owned by, by generally the groups. Um, it's a different, different beast. Um, but yeah, we just want our, our little space in the uh, market. <laughs> and we mentioned Nick earlier, earlier you know, you, you share a famously characteristic or charismatic uh, leadership with your brother. Um, how has your business dynamic changed over the years and how has your relationship altered too? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think the, Nick and I still do all the design of the watches. And I think that it's, it, if you can design together, it's always been easy because we grew up, we like the same stuff. If he does a shit design and I look at him, Nick, that's a bit shit, isn't it? He sort of gets it and you might whinge and grumble and we might have a bit of an argument. Then you'll go, yeah, yeah, yeah probably right. And, and vice versa, whereas I think with often with business partners, you'd never actually say what you really mean because you're worried about upsetting. And that little thing grows and grows into a big issue, whereas Nick and I are quite happy to sort of, uh, you know, take it out in the open. And, and so it's been lovely. I and mean, look, it's been, you know, to share this journey with, with a family member, um, but it's not just a family business. We've got, you know, people from all different um what's life all the you know, skill sets doing a brilliant job here and and you know they're they're along for the ride as much as we are and and as responsible for success as much as we are and so that that's what the lovely part of it is and it's not just nick and i but yeah you know, really we got into this business because of my dad and his passion for for watts and clocks but he's this amazing guy ex phd aeronautical engineer from cambridge who just had the the, the, the the ability to pick up anything in a workshop and build it. Whether it's a plane, we live in a sailing boat, he built his kids, he um, uh, yeah, he just had so much energy. And and so it was very much just go and do it. You can, you can do it, it's not impossible. Um, it just takes a lot of hard work and time. And um, yeah, it just, you need massive patience to build a business, as you know. It, it doesn't happen overnight and if you do you'll never do a good job of it and i'm sure your father would be extremely proud of both of you i really really do mean that from the bottom of my heart i'm sure he'll be i mean absolutely stunned by the success you've had it's it's uh it's uh, been profound and uh you know I, I listen over the years you've talked about the various challenges you've had and you know the the opportunities as well i mean what has been the greatest challenge to you in terms of mechanical watchmaking? The ch the ch okay, so it would have been so much easier. So, so much of this industry, you have the, the top players who, who will manufacture everything themselves, and you'll have a lot of people who are marketing brands and they'll outsource all the manufacture. Uh, whether it's to Switzerland or China, if it's a lower level brand, we sort of made this commitment to try and do it ourselves. But you know, for me to make one component, I'm building a machine. Um, uh, yeah, I need the skill set to run that machine. I need to buy that machine in from Switzerland. Just the scale of investment is so great. Um, that just becomes incredibly difficult to get it right. And and I think you're you're trying to do that whilst selling watches and market yourself and and. Um, and, and I always, this is why I love so much about now having a home where people can come visit, is that you as a, a, a watch buyer, you, you look at a watch and go, well, why, how on earth can I justify that as big five grand, that watch or 10 grand, whatever. But come and see it being built. Come and see the skill set, each of those individuals, that minimum, you know, 150 to 300 components, all machined to five microns, um, accuracy, you, it's that level, you suddenly look at that and go, yeah, I can't understand why. But what is brilliant is that watch will, that will work in 200 years time. You know, 
yes, you may lose a bit of that discount as soon as you walk out the store, but it, what else do you buy these years that last forever? And it literally does. And um, you know, we've got a, in this new, in our new place, we've got a military wall where all the military squadrons and we've got watches from all the, you know, we made for probably over 400 military squadrons now. And you've got some examples. And I had a journalist come and look and he said, well, you know, why do the, these military guys buy it? They can have a GPS of Garmin on their wrist or something. Yeah. And he's saying, well, because you fly an F-15 for seven years of your life. The rest of your life you spend talking about flying an F-15. <laughs> Lack the watch to prove it and you give it to your son and gives it to the grandson. They're family heirlooms. And yeah. what else apart from watches and jewellery does that really happen these days? So, um, yeah, it's just, I, look, you're not in this game to make quick money, that's for sure. Um, you're in it because you've got a passion, you love what you do, and, and you're making something that's tangible and physical um, to, uh, yeah, to, to have on your wrists. Well, and, and you know, every time you've come up to Scotland and tell your story, um, I'm sure I've told you this before, you know, both you and Nick have, 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 have had the pleasure of, of, of hearing you talk. Every time you tell that story, somebody whispers in my ear halfway through, go and get me a watch. I want a watch. Give me a watch right now. And it is that that connection, that, that emotional connection that, that you so, you know, you create so cleverly um, and well deserved because you've got this, it's, you know, it's not started over substance. It's here. It's happening. It's happening here in the UK. It's been manufactured. I noticed you flashed up your 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 watch there, the, the Hawking watch. Did I yeah. see that right? Yeah. So, yeah, this is that was quite a curveball last year. It was quite not not everyone didn't really think so it's a single um retrograde um really lovely movement so so retrograde is when you have the you know the second hand on this it ticks up and then goes back um it's a really pretty big date um how did that come about back, how did it come about because it's you know it was a real and, and you know it was well, as I'm, always as always you know you came up with something that nobody ever would have predicted so the Hawking, so Stephen Hawking um, went to school with my dad, um, St. Albans School, and then my dad went off to Cambridge. Stephen went to Oxford, then to Cambridge. So they were at Cambridge together, and I went to school in Cambridge, and I used to cycle past him. He used to literally be in his wheelchair going off to his lectures. And I remember 1988 when his a Brief History of Time came out. It was such... Uh, a powerful book for those who are interested in it, that it just changed the, the way people thought. So Stephen, um, yeah, the idea that the world came from a, a you know, universe started with an atom and ended up in a, in a black hole, um, and the whole idea of brief history of time um, was quite, it's just such a lovely story. And so working with um, the family, the Hawking Foundation, it suddenly, um, yeah, we could raise money for charity. Uh, uh, they um, were very keen to do something. He wanted, he loved classic style with a twist. And so in the back of the watch, we have, um, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but you can, um, wood from Hawkins desk with a meteorite in the middle. It's the star scene, um, the day is born in Oxford um, and paper from one of his, his seminal uh, theses. So it's just, um, it's a real piece of history, and it's and the first time we've done a ladies' limited edition as well. So you have that with the um, uh, the, st the stone in the meter um, the meteorite dial, sorry, on the on the dial. So it's so you've got the texture. It's, it's a lovely watch, but yeah, it's been a fun fun project to work oh, on. Congratulations! And here we are now. So we've got some new announcements today. Yeah, so new announcements today. So we have um, a new uh, supermarine collection the supermarine uh, uh chrono so this is based off our supermarine which is our diving watch um but with a chronograph on and uh, gmt so you have the screw and pushers um ceramic bezel um uh 200 meters water resistance so it's not a deep dive watch it's that sports dive watch with a clear case back, which is really quite difficult to do clear case back because on diving watches, we, we sussed it out with the Supermarine 500 because it's quite thick if you really want to go past 100 meters 
on a big watch, you, you, you need to sort of make sure that really works. So um, this is a new watch to the collection, um, known as the Supermarine Chrono. What case, case size is that, Giles? Yeah, um, uh, 43 millimeter oh. case size. So it's not too thick. Um, it's like uh, bronze hands and you have it in, in the blue dial and in the black dial. Um, Really, I, I think I've always said to you, I thought, always thought the Supermarine collection needed a chronograph. So there you go. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> um, and we've just done a campaign. Actually, we're working with a long-term sort of friend who's become a bit more of a formal ambassador to ours. Is Foxy from um, SAS Who Dares Win? So he's been out testing this. So we've got some great content coming out with with him on that. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice watch. Um, and as you see. Um, open case back and some details of that um, on the strap, 5,395. It's a, it's a lot of watch. All our ISO um, uh, chronometer uh, rating. Um, yeah, really, actually it's, it's yeah, it did need a chrono in the, in the collection. Um, and obviously that's Foxy himself, who is, um, He's just such a nice guy and, and what he's achieved. So he's doing quite a lot with us on, on that. Um, the next watch is this, which is, um, it's the Argonaut uh, Azure. So it's based on, it's blue dial. Now, two years ago, we launched our MOD collection and, and that is we became the exclusive luxury watch partner for the three armed forces. So the army, Navy and um, Air Force. This, the um, Argonaut we launched for the Navy, it's a um, compressor um, uh, shape. We launched with a black dial. So compressed with an internal bezel. So this unscrews the four o'clock um, crown unscrews and that turns your internal bezel. So it can be used as a, a diving watch. Nice and clear to read. Um, blue dial, slight sunburst on the dial with a slightly different blue tone um, and orange on the internal bezel. Nice sort of orange red hands, so it's, um, orange uh, um, uh, minute hands, it's very clear to read. And uh, you can have it on multiple um, straps, but this comes on a, a, a orange rubber strap and it's really great. It's a sort of post COVID, let's go to the beach. Um, 42 mil, it's I think the um, this is probably one of our most underrated watches. Um, I really, really like it. It's a really Looks nice fab. Looks fab. Watch. Blue dial's gorgeous. Blue dial, yeah. slight sunburst. Orange, orange is a you know great, awesome. Yeah. Love so it. That, that's quite fun, and and obviously I, I yeah with the navy aircraft carrier. But I like to say that you know we have our clocks uh, in all over both the aircraft carriers. So we we made Bremer clocks for the two. Um, aircraft carriers, which I think this is actually, is it is it in Scotland at the moment or it was going to? Well, it could, could have been because last week uh, there was a military operation going on in the Clyde and there was helicopters flying over the top of my house in the oh, middle of the night. It was so, then. Yeah, yes. so I think I've got a good feeling it could well be here. It was, uh, and I, I, wasn't that where someone phoned up the police and said, look, um, why is the Queen Elizabeth allowed to come in lockdown? Um, thinking it was actually the Queen and not the, uh, not the boat. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, so this is it. We also have um, uh, a new 300. So this is the Supermarine um, 302. So we're we'll going on the GMT theme here at the moment with on the Supermarine uh, Chrono. Um, and the 300 uh, size, so this is the Supermarine 300, uh, which is originally 300 meter dive watch, um, 40 mil case has, yeah. has become a, a, a very popular watch of ours. And we wanted to um, upgrade it with putting a GMT in it. I think personally, GMT is probably one of the best features, uh, complications on a watch. It's just yeah. incredibly useful. So we've put GMT, we have our, we call it the P51 loom, which is this sort of cream loom. Um, this comes on a, a, a cream leather strap, but obviously you can choose it on, on any strap and, that you want. Um, really nice watch, proper um, diving watch, 300 meter water resistant with um, obviously um, ISO chronometer rated as well. Um, uh, it's just, it's a really pretty watch to wear. Um, 
and I think the sizing wise, you it's it's on. I think you get used to a, a watch, whatever size it is. Mm -hmm. I do love actually changing watch sizes because you go for a smaller, it feels so nice, and you think actually I miss my bigger one. You go back to a bigger, and um, but I think you know our, our whole role with new watches is you want to give selection for different people. Um, oh, and this is this is Nick Butter who is. Um, uh, an extreme runner and he's his next venture and he'll be wearing the, the supermarine he's um running um two marathons a day over 100 days to run around the uk and this is the man who's run a marathon in every country in the world he's running his life over forty-five thousand miles he's just a machine he's off two years to a record attempt across the US. And uh, so you'll see him running around the UK with his uh, uh, new su Supermarine watch. And oh, I was gonna say, you've had, so you've had somebody swim around the UK. Yeah, uh, um, uh, attempt the paddle board. So Ross yeah. Edgley swam yeah. around, so he's, yeah. he's yeah. a wonderful guy. Yeah, um, yeah paddle board, uh, uh -huh. which, which was an amazing attempt, but didn't, uh, COVID stopped him uh, uh once actually scottish he got to scotland and with covid and that had to stop uh -huh. um but that was an amazing tent and uh, yeah obviously cycling that's easy but uh uh yeah i think uh all those attempts i, I stay away from personally <laughs> and, and on that i mean i need to mention of course nim's achievement um oh. last year i mean i've had the pleasure of meeting nims um down at, at uh, bremont house a couple of years ago absolutely charming chap lovely chap and massive achievement i mean he was embarking on his challenge of the seven peaks in 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 uh well yeah. like seven months he did it in the end so, yeah he, he needed to do beat six years and he <laughs> wanted to do it in seven months and did it in six and a half which is just ridiculous yeah uh iconic some iconic photography from that expedition as well and i still see he's still pushing himself hard at the moment um well he's just he's up at um, k2 isn't he yeah, yeah first winter exactly attempt of uh, well he succeeded of k2 um, yeah. he, he, he is a machine um well uh, adventure is is a part of your dna isn't it i suppose and uh you know keep pushing the boundaries keep pushing well we wanted always our three pillars of of Bremer are you know British engineering, so as much as we can do in the UK and, and obviously British theme of what we are about. Um, aviation military is always, we saw an aviation watch um, was not necessarily, you didn't have to be a pilot to have an aviation watch. You, it was about a watch you could wear in a boardroom or up Mount Everest. Um, it's a style, it's a, of watch as much as um, anything else. It's not a dive watch, it's not a dress watch, it's that middle ground. Of, of practical watch to go and wear. And then the final pillar was always adventure. And that came from testing with the likes of Charlie Borman, Hugh McGregor in the early days of Bear Grylls and his TV programs, and then the military. So it was just about testing watches. And I always loved the fact that someone like Ben Saunders doing South Pole Trek, that actually he has to have a mechanical watch. A quartz battery watch dies after five days in those temperatures. Mm. So it's old-fashioned technology, you know, cogs and gears, isn't it? Yeah, amazing, absolutely amazing. And out of that, you know, you mentioned military commissions, and I mean, always love a cockpit wristy, as they're called. Yeah. You know? I mean, you must have more of yeah. those than anybody else. It is gone to Bremont Military. It's the best, best Instagram. It's sort of, uh, <laughs> yeah, you look at it going, you couldn't buy that shot. It's sort of great. <laughs> um, what have you what have you been your proudest collaborations then with with on that on that basis the military basis um the the best collaboration um on the military i think we're just you know, I, so proud on so uh, everything whether it's um army navy air force um you know, originally as u2 spine planes pilots and working on the edge of space wanted watches and um it's just you know, probably over 400 squadrons now and some we're just not allowed to talk about and and they're they're proud owners and it pushes us as a business to develop new projects and we test new things out with these these guys and um and they're they are becoming proper watch lovers as well uh which so it's it's yeah it's a brilliant thing as i said before to 
hand to your kids and pass on, but they properly use them. And it's interesting, in a lot of military briefings now, you're not allowed to wear smartwatches anymore because they could be hacked. So it's old school watches and yet, you know, in their cockpit of their plane, yes, they've got GPS all the correct times, mm -hmm. but you just want something nice and sort of reliable to have on your wrist. Oh, that's a fantastic. Very, very uh, successful partnership for you there and uh, look forward to seeing how that develops. Now you're in, in the new wing, you're in your new home. Hopefully, we are, hopefully you get the snagging organized. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in, in, I'm sharing an office with Nick and we the, uh, the lighting is obviously not working, so I apologize for that. But the, this is the teething, and probably it will be months before we finally finish it out. But you've yeah. got, um, yeah, we, we've gone down your route. We've got a bar in here. Oh, good um, lad. Absolutely uh, fabulous. Yeah, so you've got <laughs> bars, shops, uh, um, well, displays. Um, you just walk down history of Bremont, which you can also look. Uh, you, you come and view watchmakers. You can do watch. Um, training days so you can come in as a group and build watches we can show what it's all about and what we're doing we're doing a um a 25 pound fee to come for a tour but all net proceeds go straight to charity so we're picking different charities um first one is an amazing charity called john Egan trust and john Egan was one of the red arrows pilots who died and his wife set up this amazing charity which is all helping disadvantaged children so these are children who may be orphaned um, uh, come from terrible homes and need support and we've done various tours around and one tour I, I took around these 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 children and showed them what we're doing and hearing some of their stories just honestly made me cry and uh, it's brilliant that we can sort of help raise funds for these people and get them involved and we've, we've got a friendship scheme so if we ever have opportunities we'll we'll look after these kids so um yeah so please come pay your 25 pounds know it's all going to a great cause and visit and you've got to bring got to bring a group down from glasgow the well, we've, 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 had, we've, had, we've had a couple of visits over the years and you yeah. know and it is amazing when, when your customers are brought into the space and they see these time pieces being worked on you know, right in front of them, it, it creates that connection and, and just that, you know, you, you can't really put it into words what a profound effect it has on somebody buying a watch when you see that, that happening. And uh, I mean, there's a vast space you've got there now. Um, you've got a few rooms to fill, haven't you? I mean, like... just need shots to open. That would help, wouldn't it? There's no <laughs> yeah. start of watches. No, I, 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 we wanted something where you could grow into it. Yeah, I was going to well. say, you've I've clearly got a plan. To, to grow into it and uh, um, I can't wait to, to come down and see it and uh, and, uh, and have, have a right good poke about. Well, look, and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the likes of you um, and all your wonderful team at Rocks to, you know, because retailers out there telling our story and supporting and, and, and I still think, and it's weird, the world we're in and internet has become such a big thing, you know, watches, yes, you can go and buy online, of course, but touching and feeling. And we always say, look, you know, pick up a Bremer watch and feel the case, feel the quality, and, and it, you get it. Um, but online, you just don't get that. So I think, you know, the future of retail uh, in our industry is as, as strong as it ever was. Um, I think the internet's brilliant for communicating, and, and obviously someone's seen it, they may go and buy it online. But yeah, we, we, we want all the retail to open as soon as possible. And, and we love connecting with clients as well. And as, as you do such a brilliant job there, um, uh, you genuinely love your clients and, and we do as well. And we always say, if you buy a Bremel, you enter the Bremel family and you become part of what we do and the journey. And so, yeah, we all need short stores to open, don't we? Yeah, bravo. And uh, you're right. The Bremel family is, uh, it's a, uh... Very proud to be part of it. It's it's fabulous. So planes, no trains, automobiles, and boats. Yeah. Surely space is next. Space is next. It's yeah, it would be quite good space. Um, yeah. The, the have you have we come out with a Tesla sort of uh, <laughs> SpaceX watch going on. Um, be interesting. Yeah, the next next stage. The challenge you've got. Um, 
uh, with a lot of astronauts, they want cores actually. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I've mean, obviously got the old school and yeah. uh, um, the way it was back then. Um, and there aren't that many astronauts going up into space. Uh, not yet. There's going to be more. Yet. Yeah. Not not yet. Um, but there, yeah, there will be. But you're right. We've got to get out there. Um, but they, <laughs> they, I mean, some of the crazy things we have coming across our door. It's just hilarious. I'm just about to go and do this. And you go, what? Um, and I think that there are lots of, um, yeah, the, the, you know, the, our world. We we can anything we get involved with are purely because Nick and I really enjoy it and we sort of get involved and uh, um, and and I think it's it's having the right messages that that improve our product so there's no point us getting involved with anything if we don't think it's creatively or mechanically improving what we do and and that's the lovely thing about something like a, a Williams or, or our relationship with Rolls-Royce with um, the Ironbird so we created obviously the, the, the Iron Bear watch uh, with Rolls Royce, but they are going for the world speed record attempt for electric aircraft. It's on the first watch uh, planes they've built. Well, and since all of their back, their relationship with Supermarine Schneider Trophy Air Races. But so they built this electric aircraft. They plan to beat the record. It should have happened last year, but I think it will happen in the next month or two. And, you know, we've designed part of their cockpit. They've got a chronometer in their cockpit, but we've machined some of their cockpit handle mechanisms, their escape route. So it's a really lovely thing. And to be able to work with a partner like that, that is you're breaking a record engineering wise, you're creating lots of great content. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a fun world when it's going well to, to be in. Um, we just need, um, you, you know, it's a nightmare when, these attempts get sort of held back because of obviously what's been going on. And, and yeah, it's, it's, you know, anniversary of lockdown and all that. Um, we, yeah, I think we all need the world to get open again, don't we? Well, Giles, it's always a pleasure to catch up with you. It really is. Um, I can't wait to see you back up here. We can't wait to come down to, to see the wing when uh, social distancing allows. Um, yeah. Really excited to see the Braemont on an, an F1 car, really generally can't wait to see that. And uh, really looking forward to seeing the new product, getting it in my hand um, and getting it out to customers. We're a proud partner of Braemont. We've been partners now for 10 years, believe it or not. Um, it's always, always, always great fun to, to see you or Nick and also all the partners, the adventures that you work with. And, uh, you know, the only way is up. It's a really, really exciting period ahead for the brand. Um, we're a big fan of what you guys do, really, really are, and uh, really get it. And, uh, you know, I wish you well. And uh, let's get through the next few months, get yeah. back open and get back to normal again. We'll be there. And, and I think you sort of, uh, you go through all this, you realise actually, you, you, if you're going to buy something, you make sure it's going to last. And, and uh, no, it's, I can't wait to see you all. I can't wait to be back up in Scotland. Um, and yeah, big thank you for your support. Really appreciate it. And for everyone for tuning in and watching. And um, yeah, please have a look at all the more detailed videos. I haven't done the very good presentation for all of our content, but have a look at the tour of the wing. Um, and yeah, come down with the Rocks clan and visit us because um, we'd love to show you around. Can't wait. And make sure you get the electrician in to fix your lights. Yeah, yeah, I'll get that done. Before <laughs> Great. Charles, all the best. All the best. You take care. All the best. Bye Thank bye. you, everyone. Bye. bye. bye.